Hey everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com, and welcome to the Daily Futures Market Outlook, where we take a look at our big six markets and formulate an attack plan for tomorrow's price action. Tomorrow being the 19th, also OPEX. Tomorrow is the third Friday of the month, which means that it generally is a little bit, a uh, little bit of an oddball one. Uh, on top of all of that, we're getting hit with news constantly all over the place, uh, and while well, now tomorrow with a complete lack of news, it should be a fun one tomorrow. But before we jump into that, as always, make sure to swing on over to SlingshotFutures.com. Scroll down and click on the Join the Daily Outlook newsletter. That's where you can sign up for the email list so you know every single time one of these videos comes out. Uh, we also talk about all kinds of different stuff. Different stocks, cryptocurrencies, uh, pretty much anything that moves, we're going to talk about it uh, when it looks like a good potential setup on the newsletter. So a great one to get your hands on. And of course, at the bottom of the page, every single day we post two different things. We have the live trade room morning prep levels. Those are the major levels of support and resistance for our big six markets that we post every morning to get ready for the market. And then, of course, afterward we talk about either a psychology move or uh, we talk about a trade from that day and really kind of break them down to learn as much as possible. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure to click on the live trade room subscription and trial info. From there, you can sign up for a one day trial, sit down with us in the room and see what we're all about. See if it fits your style. And of course, uh, if you really enjoy it, you can join as a weekly or monthly subscription. And if you join as a full fledged VIP member, the live trade room comes as part of the package. Now, taking a look at the Bund, uh, the Bund, well, we, kind of an oddball one. We had that gap down after a huge rally to the upside, and that just gave the buyers a big excuse to become buyers again, right? We, we, we have a strong move going higher, and then we open the next day with a gap down. It's pretty much just a pullback, right? You have a nice little pullback into an area of potential support right around where everything kicked off from before. You better believe the buyers are going to come in pretty aggressively if they're given a chance. And, well, it looks like they did. Uh, that rally to the upside did find a little bit of a tough time turning into more of a range and then breaking down. But this breakdown is still having a little bit of trouble. We're starting to see some sort of migrating ranges where we have the move up into a range. They tried to break higher. They failed back down. And now we're starting a new range here that we are pinned to the lows of. And arguably, go to a fast enough time frame, there's another range right there. The overall move is just really kind of steady and slow right now. So the big thing that we really need to keep our eyes on is, you know, with this slowdown and with this possible range, the bigger trend is obviously up. And buyers are going to be looking for a dip to buy into so that they can buy at a better price. That may mean that tomorrow just goes range bound or maybe tomorrow is a little bit of a pullback day so that they can kick off the new week into Monday with a little bit of a better price to enter on in. Uh, now, looking at the areas of support, we have 161.47 down to 43. And then we have down to 29. And of, of course, if they go down to the prior low of day uh, at 161.10, that would also be a nice area of potential support. Now, looking forward a little bit more, we have weekly levels of support and resistance at 160, 99, and 90, and tomorrow is the last day of the week. So these kinds of levels begin to become much stronger than you would see on, say, a Monday, right? When you go into a Friday and you have weekly levels versus uh, weekly levels on a Monday, well, that just happened, right? On a Friday, though, a little bit of a different story. So we do have some other levels of support and resistance underneath us. Overall, though, looking to be a buyer here on the Bund. Uh, switching over to the euro, the euro gave back a lot of what it did yesterday and dipped down with a huge bear channel working lower and towards the end of the day got a little bit exhaustive, right? They blew off the lows of that channel and now we're starting to see a pullback. Not very often do you see a V bottom formation like this, uh, but when they blow through a low like that with that much aggression, smack into the prior low of day in reverse, we may just be in store for a V bottom. Uh, so if that is the case, we may see a small little pullback and then a rally up. But either way, right now, we are very, very bullish, uh, which may seem kind of odd. But right now, it's the bears have lost all of their grip. Uh, now, what I mean by very bullish, I'm not saying, you know, buy now and look for a massive run higher. Uh, but what we are looking for is a pullback to get late sellers into the move, trap them in and then pop the market back up to where we kind of started around the 11400 or so, 11405 in that major area of support and resistance. That's also, depending on when they come into there, horizontal support and resistance at the top of a channel, a little bit of a kill zone. Now, generally speaking, when you blow one end of the channel off, you're looking for that same thing on the opposite end. So we may be in store for a little bit of a blow off through the highs, before we get that rollover to a new low. But either way, looking to buy in the short term for that rally up, and then looking to sell once we start getting up towards those highs for a bigger move down. 
Over on gold, nice big old wedge working its way lower. Pretty plain and simple here. When we have a wedge in this strong of a breakdown, we have a three push wedge bottom. And that third held very nicely. So a lot of times what we're looking to uh, to kind of expect is a little bit of a correction. We want to see what happens if we can get some slightly more uh, higher prices. We've been falling for quite a ways now, and it would be very interesting to see what the sellers do if given the chance to get in at a much better price. And right now that area is at 51.5, or if they really get a jump higher, 56.6. Those are the big areas of interest that I'm looking for in terms of selling opportunities to drive the market back down. And uh, it all depends on, uh, you know, if they even get that high. Right now we do have a small little bull channel at play that is trying to break down. This may be all of the correction that we get. Hopefully not. I would love to sell at a higher price, but if that is the case, we'll probably continue this trend down into tomorrow morning. So uh, one of two options. Either we get a better price or it breaks down soon and we just keep grinding lower in the overnight session. On the bonds, eh, mostly back to normal. A little bit of bullish momentum right at around uh, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. A uh, good rally to the upside. And then for the U.S. session, we're left with kind of the scraps after a move like that. Lots of back and forth. Not really a whole lot going on. Generally, this looks like a huge flag. Um, but it's a really wide flag, and it's gone on for a very long period of time. A lot of times when you have a flag that's that extended, yeah, it usually doesn't hang around for much longer uh, before it starts to either make up its mind and break out up or it fails and collapses back down to a new low. Either way, we're just kind of smack in the middle right now, and it's not a place that we want to be on the bonds. Uh, there's too much back and forth going on. There's just too much to deal with right in the middle here with support and resistance. So we're kind of sit on hands. I would rather see either a pull down to around 153.14 or a pop higher to 154.07 for buying and selling pressure off of either side. But right now in the middle, yeah, it's kind of a no trade zone for me. On crude oil, massive rally to the upside, taking back everything that happened at that five, uh, five to six o'clock drop there. That huge drop lower was met with an immediate buying pressure. And once again, you don't see them very often, but a big old V bottom. Now that V bottom does open up an objective to the upside that buyers will be looking for. And this is really the first pullback that we've had. So with this first pullback, we're looking for a major objective up at 50.08 for final completion. Now that may hit in the overnight session, that may hit uh, you know, tomorrow afternoon, and it may not hit until next week. But either way, we have an upside objective at 50.08, and once again, we'll be dealing with that $50 level. I'm sure you all, if you've heard me speak for longer than a couple seconds when we're around this level, you probably immediately gained a headache from that one because that $50 level, 50, 49, 50, and 51, those levels tend to be a bit of a mess. And unfortunately, we're starting to round right back off into that area once again. So got to play a little bit safe on crude for tomorrow's price action around that $50 mark. Overall, though, looking to be a buyer. I would love to see a dip down to 49.51, maybe a little bit below that into that monthly support area. Uh, and again, maybe a little head fake down here and then another rally back to finish that objective off. And then finally, the S&P 500, uh, mostly a range, not really accomplishing a whole lot today. If we look at the grand scheme of things, uh, we, I mean, we really haven't gone that far, right? If we zoom out a little bit here, we can see that we opened up here and we're closing here. Right, So the daily candle is, well, lackluster at best. Not a whole lot of conviction on either side. It did close bullish, but that's not exactly the most bullish of candles in the world. Uh, so mostly still just kind of range bound, not really a whole lot going on uh, after that big drop lower. Now that big drop lower, we are in a three push wedge bottom scenario. Uh, so a deeper correction is anticipated and we're right in that correction zone. This is the hot spot for the sellers to defend right inside here. And so far they look like they're making an attempt at it. So as long as this continues, even though this looks really bullish, I'm still leaning on the sell side right now. I would love to see a little quick snap back up towards that 69 quarter, even all the way up to 72 half, and then look to drive the market back down to attempt those lows. If they do break down again tomorrow, there's a very good chance that we have another good run to the downside. If the sellers give up, which is a big clue, if the sellers give up, you'll probably see them start stalling out around that 56 area, even down to 51 or so and then they'll start bouncing around and pop back higher. Either way though, I mean, from here down to here, that's still a really nice move if you ask me, and I would be totally okay with that. So that's gonna do it for the outlook. In terms of the news for tomorrow, there is nothing for the US session. Out of Canada, we have at 8.30 Eastern time, the core CPI month over month. The previous was 0.3%. 
And also at 8.30, we have the core retail sales month over month forecast is 0.2% there. Uh, but for the U.S. session, the early morning session, the afternoon session, we have nothing. Not a, not a single thing. On an OPEX Friday, it's beautiful outside. And there's no news after a kind of a slow week and a lot of weird stuff going on in the news. I am wagering a guess that there are going to be a lot of traders who call it early tomorrow and we may have a little bit of a mess on our hands the later and later tomorrow gets. So play it safe and like we always say, make the plan, trade the plan, follow those rules, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. Until next time, we'll see you all.